Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we are going to be looking at some CSEC economics. I know it's been a while, but we are here with a new economics video. And we're going to pick up from where we left off from the last econ video, which was section three, demand and supply. But today we're going to look at elasticity. So we're going to try and cover as much as we can as it relates to elasticity, price elasticity, income elasticity, cross elasticities. And we're going to look at and see how to interpret certain, certain numbers and the graphs that are associated with each level of elasticity. So today we're going to try and focus on mainly, we're going to use a combination of the textbooks and some slides, but we're going to pull more from the textbook just in case most of you all have that textbook and you see some words that might be a bit confusing to you. So let's jump in right now. So the first thing we're going to start with is the definition of price elasticity or elasticity in general. What is elasticity? Now what elasticity is, is is a measure of how much buyers and sellers respond to changes in market conditions. So elasticity is all about how buyers and sellers respond to changes in market conditions. Whether the price goes up, your income goes up, goes down, whatever. So it's about how much the, the responsiveness of the buyers to certain economic, certain market conditions. So. We're going to start with the main one, which is price elasticity. And what is price elasticity? Price elasticity of demand is a measure of how much, a measure of how much the quantity demanded of a good responds to change in price of that good. Price elasticity of demand is a percentage change, is the percentage change in quantity demanded given a percentage change in the price. Let's run through that again. Price elasticity of demand is a measure of how much the quantity demanded of a good responds to a change in the price of that good. So they're saying, remember, remember we learned the laws of supply and demand. And we say as prices go down, demand goes up. And as prices go up, supply goes up. But we can't just say down and up, down and up. You have to, you have to know what degree. To what extent downwards did it go? To what extent upwards did it go? And so that's what elasticity is all about. It's all about, as they say here, allow us to analyze supply and demand with more precision. So yes, the price went down and so the demand went up, but just by how much did demand go up by? Was it by a lot? Was it by a little? How do we know? And that's where elasticity comes into play. It measures the responsiveness of, of buyers and sellers to changes in market conditions with more precision. So that's what it's all about. It measures the responsiveness, the precision of the responsiveness to changes in market conditions. And so the first one we're looking at is, of course, price elasticity of demand. What is it exactly? Price elasticity of demand, RPED, measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded to a change in the price of the good. For example, if the price of butter falls, the quantity demanded will rise. What elasticity of demand attempts to predict is the amount by which the quantity demanded will rise. So that's what we're talking about. Yes, when they're going to rise, car price gone down, but by how much? To what extent? To what degree is it going to rise? A lot, a little bit, not at all, in between. That's what elasticity is all about. So we're going to continue using the textbook here. How responsive is quantity demanded to this falling price? Will quantity demanded be very responsive or not responsive at all? The formula for price elasticity of demand is percentage change in quantity demanded or QD over percentage change in price. So that's two parts here. It's the percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by percentage change in the price. That's the formula for elasticity of demand. Let's look at this here. That's the formula. The price elasticity of demand is computed as the percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. So you have to find the percentage change in demand first and then the percentage change in price and then you do the maths, you divide them. And so we're going to go through that right now. So let's look at the table here. Let us continue with the example of butter. Say that when the price of a 500 grams tub of butter is $10, the quantity demanded is 8 tubs. So it's at $10, quantity demanded, 8 tubs. Then if the price increases to $12, so the price gone up, 
the quantity demanded falls to six tubs so that's the law of demand right there price went up quantity demanded falls to six tub the information is summarized in the table below so this is the table right here so original price and quantity was ten dollars eight tubs so when it is ten dollars you demand eight the market demands eight tubs when it is twelve dollars in new price now and in new quantity when it is twelve dollars the price gone up the, the new demand is six tubs so you do realize that it has fallen it has fallen by what two so the first step in finding elasticity is to find out the change the change in quantity demand and then the change and then the percentage change in quantity demand two steps so first we look at the quantity the, so how you find the change in quantity demanded very simple you can see it right here you have the eight which is the new sorry you have the six which is the new quantity demanded you have the eight which is the old so what we're saying is that it fell by two that's the difference right there two so you have the new quantity demanded minus the original quantity demanded so it is the new quantity which is eight minus sorry sorry the new quantity which is six minus the original quantity which is eight so the six goes here the eight goes here you do the math you should end up with negative two because this and that just indicates that it fell the price fell and the demand the price went up and the demand fell that's what it's negative to sell you that the change is by i fell by two so the change in quantity demanded fell by two so that's what the negative is all about it fell by two so that's one part so you know so you already find out found out the change in quantity demanded it is the six the new quantity minus the eight which is the old quantity and so you get negative two now the next part now is you have to find the percentage change in quantity demanded and that is the change in quantity demanded over the original times 100 so the change would be the two that's the change in quantity demanded because you found that up here so right here put in the two and then you put that over the original quantity demanded which was eight so it's negative two over eight or it's two over eight so you got that by minus in six the six minus the two so we know that so now we are here you can do that off the bat you know you can see you can see one time because it's a simple number you can say okay two over eight that's a quarter so that's 25 percent you can see that but for others you have to go through with the maths you might not be as you know as versatile as uh, in certain other numbers this one might be easy but let's go so how do you find that so to find the percentage change in quantity demanded, what they did was you put the two over the eight times 100. So you want to see what the percentage change was as it relates to the quantity demanded. So it's two over eight times 100, and that gives you 25%. So now we, are, we, are, we found the first part of the formula. We found the first part, the percentage change in quantity demanded, it's 25%. So we found the first part. Now we have to find the bottom part, which is the percentage change in price. So how do you do that now? The new price minus the original. Remember the new price is now $12 and the original price was 10. So the new price is 12 and the original was 10. The new price is 12, original is 10. So you take the 12, put it here, and you minus that, you minus the 10 from that. And of course, you are going to get what? You're going to get 2, right? You're going to get 2 for that one. So that's how we get that one. See right here, continue with the example from table 2. The change in price is $2 because the 12 minus the 10. So you get $2. Then you put that $2 over the original price, which was 10. You put the $2 over the original price, which was 10. So we have it right here. And you work the maths and so that's two out of ten and that is twenty percent so you have twenty percent right there and you plug the twenty percent in the formula so up here would be twenty five percent on here here would be twenty percent and then you work out the maths so now we can work out the percentage change in price so we already did that one so you plug in you plug them in now 
percentage change, quantity demanded, negative 25%. Percentage change in price, 20%. And you do the maths. And the answer you get here is negative 1.25. So when you divide the 20% by the 25, the negative 25, you get negative 1.25. So that right there is what you call the elasticity of demand coefficient. That's the elasticity of demand coefficient. That's what you found just now, the coefficient. And so you're gonna, we're gonna later look at this and interpret what this means, negative 1.25, all right? So let's look at, let's look at it uh, again. Right here, let's summarize it right here. Original quantity demanded was eight. The new quantity demanded, six. So that's a difference, a change in 25% because it was two over six and it got the two by minusing this the negative two by minusing the six from the eight you got negative two you put that over the original which was the eight and you got 25 percent change then you do that for the price original price was 10 new price 12 and so you minus that from that and you got the 20 you got the two you put the two over the 10 and you got the 20 percent so here's the formula right here Price, elasticity of demand, equal change in quantity demanded over change in price. Sorry, change in percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price. And so we end up with the elasticity of demand coefficient of negative 1.25. So what does that mean? What does that mean? We are going to look at that later. The coefficient. Now let's look at let's let's look at it from our next angle now. Go back to the same example. Look at the table 11.1 11.4. The percentage change in quantity demanded of butter is 50%. The new quantity 12 minus the old quantity 8 is a change of 4. So we're looking at if there was a rise in the look at it if, if there was a difference now. Right? Look at it if there's a difference. Look from the next angle. So I look at it from the fact that the price of butter actually fell as opposed to the one we had increased. So let's look at that one now. Now, the price of butter has fallen, so it's a new set of numbers. New set of numbers from the angle of the price has fallen. I know when the price falls, demand should increase. So let's look at it that, from that now. Now the price of butter has fallen from $10 to $9, and the quantity demanded has risen by four tubs. See the difference right here? Four tubs, all right? We will know how we found it already. The four came from. So it's always the new quantity demanded or the new original or the new price. It's always the new take away the old. All right. It's always the new take away the old. See that? The new, which is 12, minus the old, which is 8. So the new, which is 12, minus the old, that is 8. And we got four. So we take this four and put it over the old, which would have been 8. And so we get 50%. That you can see that off the bat. You can see that. You don't even have to go to the real math. You can see that off the bat. So that's a 50% change in quantity demanded. So you have the 50 right now to plug to the top. Then you go down to the price. We had a new price of $9 versus the old of 10. So it dropped by 1. All right, that's a negative 1. And so therefore, you put the 1 over the 10, and that's 10%. So you 10% change in the price. 10 percentage change in the price now you plug them in and you have the percentage change in quantity demanded 50 percent that you got from the eight over the four over eight then you got the 10 percent for the percentage change in price we got by doing the one over the 10 and you times that by 100 and you get negative five so that right there is the coefficient again right there the coefficient there again so now what is the demand coefficient? The price, that's the, the price elasticity of demand coefficient. That's the number that you get after you would have plugged in all the maths. So let's read here. In both examples, the elasticity, of co the elasticity coefficient is negative. In the first example, prices rose and quantity, de quantity demanded fell. This made the percentage change in quantity demanded negative. This in turn caused the elasticity coefficient to be negative. In the second example, price fell. This made the in the second example, price fell. This made the percentage change in price negative, even though the percentage change in quantity demand was positive, representing an increase. 
the fall in price led to a negative elasticity coefficient. We can therefore conclude that the price elasticity of demand coefficient will always be negative once there is a negative or inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. So what I'm telling you really and truly is don't worry about, don't worry about the negative and positive. They'll, uh, they'll, it will always be negative. No care what, because price and demand, they have a negative relationship. And that is why the, 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 the demand curve is sloped negatively. So don't worry about this saying negative and get frightened. That don't mean the demand's wrong. That's just how it is. It's going to always be the price elasticity of demand coefficient will always be negative because there is a negative or inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. Just, just how it is. Every time price falls, the percentage change in price will be negative, leading to a negative elasticity coefficient. The percentage change in quantity demanded will be positive. The percentage change in quantity demanded will be positive every time the price rises. Quantity demanded will fall and the percentage change in quantity demanded will be negative, leading to a negative elasticity coefficient. Okay, so we, we call some big words just now. Coefficient and all them kind of stuff. But how do we interpret that? How do we interpret that? Now, you realize one was negative 5, one was negative 1.25. So you see different degrees of elasticity coming out right there. Now we have to interpret these numbers. Now let's give you, let me give you the skinny on this one. All right. So you have what you call elastic demand and inelastic demand. Degree of elasticity. Economists also speak of degrees of elasticity. The degree of elasticity describes how responsive quantity demanded is to changes in price. It is the range of possible possible elasticity of demand coefficients for a good or service. If quantity demanded is very responsive to a change in price, the quantity demanded is elastic. So if it's very responsive, as in the five, very elastic. If quantity demanded is very unresponsive to the change in price, quantity demanded is inelastic. So based on the coefficient, you would know whether it is elastic or inelastic. How do we know that? Look at this table right here. Well, this, this table summarizes the whole thing based on whatever answer you got. So, perfectly inelastic. The percentage change in quantity demanded is zero. Quantity demanded does not respond to a change in price. So, the saying here is that when, it, when the price change, whether up or down, there's no response. So, when you do your maths, the answer is going to be zero. And once the answer is zero, you have what you call perfectly inelastic demand. Perfectly inelastic mean that the, the, the coefficient is zero after you plug in everything in the equation and the answer you get is zero That means it's perfectly inelastic Then you have fairly inelastic The percentage change in quantity demanded is less than the percentage change in price So the percentage change in price is let's say 10 and the quantity demanded is 5 then you have fill inelastic demand. And we will look at that later on. Then you have what you call unitary elasticity. What this means is that the percentage change in quantity demanded is equal to the percentage change in price. And so therefore, your coefficient is going to be 1. Because the percentage change in quantity demanded is equal to the percentage change in price. What if there was a 50% change in percent 50% change in demand? With a 50% change in price, that divided by 50 divided by 50 is 1, so that's how we get 1. That's what we call unitary elasticity. Then you have fairly elastic, where the percentage change in quantity demanded is greater than the percentage change in price. That and for that, the coefficient would be greater than 1, but less than infinity. <laughs> that's a that's a stretch, right? Greater than 1, but less than infinity. That's Fairly elastic. Then we have perfectly elastic. What is that? Quantity demanded change when there is no change in price. So the quantity demanded changes when there is no change in price. So no change in price, but the quantity of demand, the quantity of demand, the quantity of demand changes. Then you have what you call perfectly inelastic, and you have what you call infinity. The, 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 the elasticity of demand coefficient will be 
it fit infinity now we have yet yeah, now we have to rep these in the graphs all right we'll rip them in the graph represent them in the graph so let's look at it from another, another perspective from the slides in elastic demand quantity demand that does not respond strongly to price changes that's in elastic demand as i said before so the quantity demand that does not respond strongly to price changes and price elastic demand is less than one so a good example of this would be uh, diabetes medicine or medicine in general right you 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 don't really change your demand based on the price because it's something you must have right so it would be inelastic the demand would be inelastic because whether the insulin go up or down you still have to buy a certain dosage of insulin if you can afford it that is but so it would be inelastic price elastic demand is less than one so once it's less than one it is inelastic so if you do your maths and the coefficient coefficient is less than one then the demand is inelastic elastic demand now quantity demand that responds strongly to a change in price so price elasticity of demand is greater than one so once you plug in do your maths and you get something greater than one like for example here you get the greater than one you know this price is this 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 demand is elastic elasticity of demand is high right here too so let's look at it further because the price elasticity of demand measures how much quantity demand that responds to price it is closely related to the slope of the demand curve so let's look at these different let's look at it graphically now this graph represents perfectly inelastic demand where elasticity is equal to zero this is perfectly inelastic so the price gone up and this is the quantity demanded is unchanged so price gone up I, it's unchanged so like i said like the diabetes medicine you have to take your dosage no matter what so the price goes up you still have to buy the same price goes down still have to buy the same so your demand is not really going to change and so you have perfectly inelastic demand right here that's how we represent in a graph so they ask you to graphically represent perfectly inelastic demand it is this vertical graph right here price on the this axis quantity on this axis y axis x axis and the graph goes right up straight up vertical that's perfectly inelastic demand then we have a, a little you know in fairly inelastic demand elasticity is less than one and here we have it right here price goes up the demand quantity demanded slightly goes down right because look at that the change in price was 22 percent but the change in quantity demanded was only 11 percent so it, the change in quantity demanded is less than the change in the price increase and so therefore we have fairly inelastic demand so the inner straight but it's not as lying down as, as the other graphs you would see so this one is you know fairly inelastic where elasticity is less than one then we have unit or unitary as i said before elasticity of demand and that's where elasticity equals one and this is always represented in a graph so a 20 percent increase in price means that is a 20 percent change in the quantity demanded you see that back back move down so that's you can see it right there so that's unitary the percentage change in quantity demanded equals percentage change in price so after you plug in all of your your numbers in the in the equation your answer your coefficient is going to be one and that means it's a unitary or unit elastic demand unitary elasticity then we have elastic demand when elasticity is greater than one so elasticity is greater than one you have elastic demand you see it right here percentage change is 22 for price but percentage change in demand is way higher than the change in price at 67 and so you have elasticity is greater than one and so you have elastic demand that's when you know something has a lot of uh, uh, you when the price goes down you run and buy a lot when the price goes up you buy a, a, a lot less 
Then you have the last one, which is perfectly elastic demand. And this is where elasticity equals to infinity. This line is going to go on and on and on and on and on infinity. At any price above the market price, quantity demanded equals zero. So you move the price up or down, demand will equal zero. And so therefore you have perfectly elastic demand. So this is for things like, you know, goods that everybody can get anywhere, like potatoes. Like the market price of potato is, let's say, two dollars a pound. Where would I change mine to five dollars? Nobody can buy it. That's gonna be zero sales for me because everybody else one is four. So that's what we're talking about here. At a price below four, quantity demanded is infinite. All right. So quantity demanded is infinite at a price below demand. So that's this one for perfectly elastic demand. So these are the graphs that represent the different degrees of elasticity from perfect which is a straight line across horizontal to perfect elasticity perfect perfectly elastic to perfectly inelastic where you have a straight vertical line up there to all in between unitary where it equals to one all right so those are the different degrees of elasticity and so they are summarized in this table right here and you, if you have the book, you can look at the table and see what they're talking about. Textbook also have some diagrams to represent all of them as well. For the textbook, you have perfectly inelastic demand, straight line. No matter where the price change, you got the price move from here to here. Demand remains demand remain the same, perfectly inelastic. Then you have fairly inelastic, steep, steep curve, but still it's a shift nonetheless. But the shift in quantity demanded is minute compared to the shift in the price. Look at a big jump in price change. But look at the small change in quantity demanded. That's fairly inelastic. And we'll understand why later on. And then we have unitary wear equals zero. Sorry, equals zero, equals zero. Then we have fairly inelastic. That's how we represented in a graph. And then we have perfectly elastic demand we are infinity this is represented in a graph right there so all this is price elasticity of demand all right good so let's see why certain things have inelastic demand whereas some have elastic demand let's see exactly why and so we're going to look at some of the factors that affect price elasticity of demand first one the price of the good if the price of a good is high the price elasticity of demand will become will be more elastic than if the price is low all right so the price is high the price elasticity of demand will be more elastic than if the price was low meaning that if the price is high of a, of a good people gonna run and go elsewhere right let's continue reading so you can see the example right here if the price of a good is high and the price elasticity of demand will be more elastic than if the price of the good is low, cars will have more elastic demand than bicycles. If the price of a new car increases by 50%, quantity demanded will fall by a larger percentage as the car now becomes unaffordable for many cons consumers. So, a car costs 10,000, even a, even a 5, whatever percent increase would cause mass exodus from that car because a five percent a couple thousand is a lot still so therefore demand for the car would significantly drop and the flip side if the prices of car go down of course everybody want a chance so you know you're going to buy it all right let's continue if the price of a bicycle increases by 50 percent quantity demanded will also fall but by less than 50 percent this is because the price of the bicycle is low relative to that of a car all right, so the price of the good is one factor that affects the elasticity of demand. The higher the price, the more elastic that demand is. The lower the price, the, the higher the price, the more elastic. The lower, the more inelastic. All right. Number, this is, this, is, this is one of the key. This is one of the key things behind elasticity of demand. This right here. Number and closeness of substitute for the commodity this is one of the key ones right here substitute because the reality is this 
if a product has a good substitute and the price of that product goes up then of course everybody gonna migrate to the lower cost and substitute one time so of course if you have a lot of substitutes they would have a they would have a high elasticity it would be very elastic if you have a high number of substitutes if there are little if there are a little bit of substitute, a little number of substitute you don't have much things you can replace it with then elasticity would be inelastic because you can't go nowhere you have no choice but to face what the price is i gave the example of the insulin where else can a diabetic go what else can they use to regulate their, 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 their insulin they don't have any other choice but to use um the insulin at um in the store so the price for that go up go down it would be inelastic because your demand would still be around the same all right so let's go the more and better the available substitute of a commodity the greater is the price elasticity of demand for that commodity teas will have a greater price elasticity of demand than a soda such as coca-cola as the drinkers of the latter will say that this is good and has no true substitute if the price of cola increased demand might fall but by less than proportionate amount now quite frankly i don't really agree with that but if you're talking about brands sure but if you're talking about about colas in general look you go to a supermarket you see a cola you can buy the cola something really matter if it's coca or pepsi or dr pepper a brown you buy the store brand because at the end of the day all of them give you that fuzz in the throat and so if the price of, of coca-cola goes up too high you're gonna just buy a cheaper substitute maybe iga a, a essentials a, fo a food whatever whatever in-store brand they have you might end up buying that because it's a chill or whatever a buster you know those kind of things because cola is cola for some people majority of the people cola is cola so that's that's it. so once you have a, um, a lot of substitutes the elasticity will be great because I can easily change from one to the next because the substitute is right there if it doesn't have a lot if, if substitutes are low a little bit of substitutes then elasticity would be inelastic because you don't have much options out there then you have the price of the commodity as a percentage of total expenditure now what this is simply saying is that let's read it the lower the percentage of your income spent on a good the more inelastic demand is expected to be the larger the percentage of income spent on the good the greater the elastic the price elasticity of that good thus demand for newspapers is likely to be more inelastic than the demand for television set and next example with things like uh matches to light your stove or even salt whether the price of salt go up or down you're not gonna buy extra salt to put down anywhere so salt doesn't really take up that higher percentage percentage of your income so salt you know whether you go price go up or down whatever you can still buy your one can can star salt until it, it is finished right so that's the next example matches you can just buy a box and match whatever whether the price here they don't buy a box and match still because it's not a high part of your percent your total expenditure it's cheap you know you buy a pack of match it's cheap you can, you can break your bank to buy a match or to buy salt you know so the more the, the higher your, your the higher percentage of your expenditure that goes towards something the more elastic that would be because you're going to be more conscious now okay i spend a lot of money on this so therefore I have to be more price sensitive towards this item in particular a cheap product you don't buy much of no matter to you right then they have adjustment time adjustment to so time so time can help you determine elasticity the longer the period allowed for adjustment in the quantity and price the more elastic demand will be this is so because it takes time for customers to learn new prices and new products switching from one product to another will take time the price of your contact lenses goes up it might take some time for you to become aware of price changes you might still continue to buy the expensive one until you learn that there are cheaper ones out there you know generics and stuff like that eventually you might switch to you might switch to another brand and so that is how time adjustment would affect the elasticity of a product over time you're going to find replacements a substitute uh, uh, uh an, another brand that you prefer and so 
that would affect me. So in the immediate few, in the immediate change of the, the price, you might be okay. I'm gonna buy it still. I'm gonna buy it still. So you might you might be so responsive, but as time goes on and you realize, okay, I find the next brand, it's cheaper, or even might be you know better, and so therefore you switch. And another thing with time is that you know sometimes the price of something goes up, right? And initially you be like, I ain't buying that. It's too expensive. But after a while, you realize that is something you actually really like. I want to use. Eventually, you fall right back into the, the old habit. I'm buying the same amount you were buying before, or even more, depending on what the product is. It happens all the time. Bread goes up, you get all upset. I am buying the bread or whatever else. Then you realize, oh wait, this is important to me in my budget, and eventually you start buying the same level that you do. And that's what time allows to, to, for you to do adjustment of time. So apart from allowing you to find substitutes and you know generics and stuff to reduce to buy the cheaper ones it also allows you to get accustomed to the new sticker shock and so you reacquaint yourself with the product after a while then they have here habit goals that are habit farming generally have a lower elasticity of demand such as you know your alcohol your cigarettes and stuff like that that you're kind of addicted to now those things you know those are what we're talking about. Consumers unlock, continue to buy similar quantities of the good even when prices increase because the consumer cannot do without the good. Habit farming goods can also be addictive goods, for example, cigarettes and alcohol. It might also be brand of a customer good, such as toothpaste, that the customer is in the habit of buying. The customer is loyal to that brand. So it doesn't have to be those destructive habit farming goods alone. It can also be, like they say, of a, things of a particular brand like for example there are some fanatics out there who just love nike and so therefore they're gonna buy the nike shirt nike pants nike sneakers nike hat no matter what if they're gonna if they're accustomed to buying jordans every year every time a new jordan pure jordan drop they're in line to buy them so that's what we call brand loyalty those are things they have a habit of buying annually monthly weekly whatever and so therefore they are going to continue buying it whether the, the price go up down left or right so that's similar to habit farming but that's the from the consumer brand loyalty perspective then we have the degree of necessity of the goods so the degree of necessity of the goods so this one simple talks talking about how important i can't even say important how let's use the word ne necessary that good is to you and this is where the example that i gave earlier with the insulin comes into play because if it's a good that you need to survive your asthma pump your insulin injection whatever if you needed your pressure medicine if you needed to survive then no matter what happened to the price, you are going to buy a similar amount, whether the price go up or down. If you're accustomed to buy one asthma pump per month, then if the price goes up, you're still going to buy your one. If it goes down, you're still going to buy your one. And so therefore, these tend to be rather inelastic in demand for certain goods. More rather inelastic because the price, you, you, you don't respond relatively, you don't respond as much to the price change. Because you still need it regardless of the price. Alright, so that's what I'm talking about. The degree of necessity of the good. And then you have the number of uses of the good. If the commodity has a large number of uses, such as aluminum, the greater will be the elasticity of demand. As price falls, a more than proportionate amount will be bought for its different uses. So the same here, if you're accustomed to buy, let's say, aluminum foil and the price of aluminum foil falls all of a sudden you're gonna end up buying more you might buy two three rolls instead because you have multiple uses for this particular product you can put it to when you're baking when you want to store food you wrap it over your plate you want to put it on your stove top to make sure that there's no spillage on your stove and other things like that you have different uses and there are other things in your house that you can find different uses for so that if the price goes down you buy a lot more if the price goes up then you would not buy as much right so that because you can substitute anyway 
or you can just not use it for that purpose so it's about the number of uses for the good think about your house think about goods that can be used for multiple purposes and then like for example your soap powder you can use it for wash dishes if you want you can use it to wash your clothes if you want scrub down your bath whatever so if the price goes down you buy more to accommodate all the uses but if the price goes up you buy less and you stick to certain particular uses then you have the definition of the good the more narrowly defined a good is the more elastic demand will be the broader the definition the more inelastic demand will be an example i have here a sony city will have an elastic demand because because as the price increases users might switch to another brand so on a brand level because the brands are so similar that if one goes up you will switch to the next one because they're basically the same right however if the price of compact disc in general so if cd prices goes up in general maybe some of you youths might not know what a compact disc is or cd is so let's use the next thing that is just out there let's say pens or pencils let's say you love your pilot pen whatever say the price of pilot pens go up you might just switch to a big or fiber castle or something like that but if however if the price of of pens goes up in general demand will remain more or less the same as there are really no close substitutes for a for a pen so you must buy a pen either way so that's what they're talking about there all right so that's basically it for the factors that affect the price elasticity of demand now the other types of elasticities includes income or yed and it's pretty much the same formula as the price elasticity of demand where percentage change in quantity over percentage change in income so you're just substituting the price for the income all right so you just put the income where price used to be and it's basically the same formula all right so income elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded to a change in income to a change in income the formula for income elasticity of demand is percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in income as income changes demand will change income elasticity of demand measures whether a demand is responsive or not or not very responsive to change measures whether demand is responsive or not very responsive to changes in income again very similar you have the original demand original income you're making a thousand a week you're demanding your four loaves you're making a thousand five a week now you demand four lo seven loaves what's the change so again is the new minus the old so it's seven minus the four so that change is what that's what three and so it's three over the over the four the original and you'll get the 75 and then you have the new minus that so there's a five thousand five hundred dollars difference and so if 500 over the original a thousand that's 50 percent change and so you get the 50 right there then you do the maths and you have your coefficient just like in the one explained above so very much the same formula as consumer income increase from 1000 per week to 100 and 1500 per week so that is part of us all things remain equal his demand for bread increases from seven loaves to from four loaves to seven loaves. Table 11.6 shows the income elasticity of demand using formula above. Both income and the demand for bread increases. The percentage change in each case is positive, giving a positive income elasticity of demand coefficient. All right, goods with a positive income elasticity of demand coefficient are normal goods normal goods are goods the demand for which increases as income increases and vice versa so you see a difference one time here between the price elasticity of demand coefficient and the income elasticity of demand coefficient because we have positive relations here now when your income goes up your demand goes up when income goes down your demand goes down so we have a positive relationship right between these two as so therefore 
and it's for normal goods. So a normal good is a good where the demand for which increases as your income increases. And if your income goes down, your demand goes down. Elasticity of demand. All right, so what is cross elasticity of demand? Cross elasticity of demand, XED, measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded for one good to a change in the price of another good. So we're looking at the quantity demanded of one good to a change in the price of another good. Now what are they talking about? So look at the formula is a little a slightly different. So for this formula you have the percentage change in quantity of good X versus percentage change in the price of good Y. So you're using the percentage change in the quantity demanded of good X over percentage change in the price of good Y. So you have two goods and you have to consider the quantity, the percentage change in the demand for one versus the percentage change in the price of another. So let's look at this. Now, when you're talking about cross elasticity, you have two ways you might see it coming from. You have what you call substitute goods and you have complementary goods. Now, a substitute good is a good that you can use in place of another. For example, the famous examples are butter and margarine. So if the price, because they do basically the same thing, if the price of butter goes up, then the price, the demand for margarine would go up because they are good, they are substitute. So if the price of butter goes up, then the demand for the cheaper, all things remaining equal, the cheaper margarine, the demand for that one would go up. And now if you have complementary now, now we have bread and butter you know, uh, cereal and milk. So if the price of, let's say, cereal goes up, then the demand for milk might go down. Or uh, let's, let's use butter and, uh, let's see, butter and bread. If the price of butter goes, bread goes up, then the demand for the complementary butter that you put in the bread, you spread the bread, would go down because now that the bread is more expensive, people are gonna buy less bread and therefore the demand for butter that as a complementary good would also fall. So that's a negative relationship right there. So when you have a substitute, it tends to be positive. So the price of one thing goes up, then the demand for the other thing, the other substitute goes up. But for a complementary, the price of one go up, then the demand for the other complement would go down. So that's what cross elasticity is dealing with. So let's, let's look at the examples from the textbook. Sometimes demand for a good might change not because of a change in the price of the good, but because there are changes in the price of another good. The demand for butter might increase even though the price of butter is constant. It might be that the price of a substitute such as margarine or jam increased, making butter relatively cheaper. Cross elasticity of demand measures this type of behavior. And so they have the example here. The following consumer behavior was observed at Sam's Minimat. The price of butter remains constant. However, the price of other goods change. This affects the demand for butter. In the first instance, the price of guava jam went up, increased from $6 to $12. Aja, that's a 100% increase. A 100% increase. Because if you take the, the 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 six twelve, take away the six, you have six left back, and so six over six times a hundred would give you the hundred percent. The demand for butter increases from six tubs per week to eight tubs per week, and that is a thirty three point three percent increase. All right, a thirty three point three percent increase. So in this case, it's a difference of two because the six minus the, the eight minus the the six minus the eight is two, and so you put the two over the six, and that's how we got the thirty-three point three percentage increase. So, since all other factors remain constant, steros parabos, we can conclude that the increase in demand for butter is due to the increased price of guava. The cross elasticity of demand for butter with respect to the price of guava jam is. 0.33 so you can say that that is less than zero all right that is less sorry less than one that's less than one so that's basically relatively inelastic 
the cross elasticity of demand for substitute is positive. Like I said, they're moving opposite they're in the same direction. When the price of one thing go up, the demand for the cheaper substitute goes up. As the price of one good increases, the quantity demanded of its substitute also increases. This is true for guava jam and butter. They are substitute. People are buying less guava jam as the price has gone up and are buying more butter. And so you have the workings right here. All right, I have coefficient right there. But you see the difference here is that you have to use both, both items, good X and good Y. So you have good X, which is the butter, and good Y. But for good X, you're only concerned about the percentage change in the quantity demanded. Whereas for good Y, you're concerned with percentage change in the price. All right, so let's look at it up here. See, for good X, you're concerned with the percentage change in quantity demanded. Whereas for, for, for item Y, you're concerned with the percentage change in price. So you're going to work out the maths. You're going to look out for the percentage change in the quantity demanded for the first good. And then you look for the percentage change in price of the other good. You put the percent over, put them over each other. So you put the percentage change in good X here, quantity demanded, percentage change in quantity demanded for good X here, and you put the percentage change in price for good Y there, you work your maths, you get a positive number, but it's less than one, so it's inelastic. All right, then you have a next example, but you look at the complements now. For the complements, there's a negative relationship, because for the complements, if the price of one good go up, the complementary good for that good would demand goods down for that one. So, in the second case, the price of bread increases from $5 to $6. A 20% increase. And we know how to find that already. Alright? We know how to find that already. So, a percentage, 20% increase. The demand for butter falls from 10 tubs per week to 9 tubs per week. A 10% decrease. Again, you minus the, 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 you take away the 9 from the 10, you have 1, you put the 1 over the 10, and so you get the 10%. Alright, since all other factors remain constant, we can conclude that the fall in demand for butter is due to the increase in price of bread. The cross elasticity of demand for butter with respect to the price of bread is negative 0.5. The cross elasticity of demand for complements is negative. As the price of one good increases, the quantity demanded for its complement falls. This is true for butter and bread. They are complements. People are buying less bread and less butter to eat with their bread. Old school bread and butter, man. Alright, so you have the workings right here. Again, you for good X, you're concerned with the quantity, the quantity demanded, the percentage change in the quantity demanded. For good Y, you're concerned with the percentage change in the price. Take those two percentages, put them over each other, do the maths, and get the coefficient right there. And so that's it for cross elasticity of demand. Now, the price elasticity of supply. Again, once you know the demand, you know the supply because the formula is relatively the same and the graphs only because from the opposite end but they would look relatively the same all right so let's look at what we're talking about exactly right here price elasticity of supply measures the responsiveness of quantity supplied to a change in the price of the good all right so again responsiveness so the price goes up how much would I increase my supply by? The price goes down, how much would I decrease my supply by? All right, and that's the formula. Percentage change in quantity supplied over percentage change in price. Again, you just put in the supply where you would have seen demand earlier. Same formula, basically. When the price of a good increases, status paribus, quantity supplied will increase. When the price of a good falls, status paribus, quantity supplied falls. This is the direct or positive relationship between price and quantity supplied, as we discussed earlier in the law of supply. When the price goes up, you supply more to maximize the profit. When the price goes down, you supply less. So they have a positive relationship. Price el elasticity of supply measures how responsive quantity supplied is to changes in price. 
will supply change by a large proportion or a small proportion when the price changes. The degree of elasticity of supply range from perfectly inelastic, I don't know how that looks, to perfectly elastic. And the table shows it again. So once it's equal to zero, it's perfectly inelastic. Once it's equal, once it's greater than zero, but less than one, you have fairly inelastic. Once it equals one, you have a unitary elasticity. Once it is greater than one, but less than infinity, you have fairly elastic. But once it is infinity, you have perfectly elastic. And again, I say, same as the graphs before. So let's look at the graphs here. Same as before, same as before. All right, the same as we had before. Here we have perfectly inelastic supply, and you see the graph right here, straight up, straight up. So the same as demand. Then we have, you know, relatively fairly inelastic. So it's a steeper curve, steeper curve. Then we have unit or unitary elasticity equal one, and you have that right there. And then you have elastic supply, relatively, relative, fairly elastic, is greater than one, and it's almost horizontal, but not quite. But then, for perfect elasticity, perfect elastic, when elasticity equals infinity, you have this straight across horizontal graph representing supply. So it's very much the same as you would have seen for the demand. So once you understand demand, you will understand the supply side of things. And you have the table here, and you have the illustrations here again. All right, so I'm trying to plug everything in one. All right, so look at this. They have an example here. You have the five pencil cases, and you have seven pencil cases, and we are talking about the price, the new price versus the old price. So the original price was $10, Price went up to 12, and you know when price go up, supply goes up, and so you do the same as as you did before. Where you have the new, then you minus the old, so that would have been the new is seven minus the old, you get five. I mean, so you get two, and so you put the two over the five, and what do you get when you put it over five? You get 40 percent, and you have the new price. Take away the old price, which is 12 minus 10, you get two, and then you put it two over the 10. So you get 20%, you take those two, put them over each other. So this is the percentage change in the quantity demanded, percentage change in the price, and the the quantity the, the the coefficient, the supply coefficient would be plus two, and that's greater than one. So if it's greater than one but less than infinity, we know we have elastic it's elastic. It's elastic. All right, and then, so that's basically it for that table. All right, so the example here, Kendra makes pencil case for sale. As with all rational producers, Kendra supplies more pencil cases as the price increases. The price increases from 10 to $12 per pencil case. Kendra's supply increased from five to seven cases. Table, what we just explained, 10.11.10 11 shows that price elasticity of supply using the formula given both price and quantity supply of pencil cases increase. The percentage change for both variables is positive, giving a positive price elasticity of supply coefficient. The price elasticity of supply coefficient is positive as there is a positive or direct relationship between price and quantity supplied. So that's basically it. So let's, let's summarize. Let's summarize. Summary. Price elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of quantities demanded to changes in price. The degree of elasticity of demand range from perfectly inelastic to perfectly inelastic a whole spectrum. These can be illustrated graphically as we showed earlier. The factors affecting price elasticity of demand are the price of the goods, the number and closeness of substitutes, the price of the commodity as a percentage of the total expenditure, adjustment over time, habit, the degree of necessity of the goods, the number of uses of the good, and the definition of the good. Income elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded to changes in income. The income elasticity of demand coefficient for a normal good is positive. 
cross elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded of good X to a change in the price of good Y. Substitutes have a positive cross elasticity of demand coefficient and complements have a negative cross elasticity of demand coefficient. Price elasticity of supply measures the responsiveness of quantity supplied to a change in the price of commodity. The coefficient for price elasticity of supply is positive. The degree of elasticity of supply range from perfectly inelastic to perfectly elastic. These can be illustrated graphically. So people, that's it for elasticity in a nutshell. Like I said, high school, so therefore the math isn't too engaging. The basic formula we're using, there's a more complicated formula out there, but we're using the basic ones. So that's it. I'm going to try and make some more econ video. I know I've been focusing on POB a lot recently, but we're going to focus on, on some econ. But the only way you're going to know if econ, if an econ video drop is if, of course, you like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to know when said video would have dropped. All right, so that's basically it for now. Catch you on the next one.